So I'm very, very honored uh, this year to be awarded the Sugio Naruki uh, Lectureship Award for Surgery at the World Lung Cancer Conference. This is a very prestigious lectureship, and I'm incredibly humbled to receive it. Now, when I came to uh, think of a topic for this particular uh, lecture, it wasn't easy. I mean, there's so many important topics we could uh, uh, go into. But I decided ultimately on the, on the title of what thoracic surgeons need to bring to the multimodality conversation. Now, I worded this title quite carefully. Note, I said, what thoracic surgeons need to bring to the multimodality conversation, not what thoracic surgeons bring to the multimodality conversation. There's a slight nuance there. We might think that this talk is delivered towards non-surgeons, and uh, I'm going to be talking about what thoracic surgeons are doing, our, our great work, and this is what you should be aware of. No. The, the the way I worded it, I said, this is what thoracic surgeons need to bring to the conversation. This talk, really, I want to deliver as much to the surgeons as well as, as to the non-surgeons. I want surgeons, my fellow colleagues in the surgical specialty, to be aware that as we move into the multimodality era, these are the things that we have a responsibility to tell our uh, non-surgical colleagues and partners in the multidisciplinary lung cancer team. Now, what do I mean by the multimodality era? Now, I, personally, I think over the last uh, several years, perhaps the biggest advance in terms of treating lung cancer hasn't been a particular operation, hasn't been a particular drug or any one particular advance, but rather it's a combination of all of these, so that by bringing all these new drugs uh, and uses of these new drugs to the forefront and showing how they can complement surgery, either in a neoadjuvant or an adjuvant setting, we are dramatically improving patient outcomes. Now, on the face of it, wow, that sounds fantastic. A lot of the advances seem to be driven by uh, the pharmaceutical industry. By producing these new drugs, they're delivering such great demonstrable results. And as we've seen in several of the recent World Lung Cancer Conferences and also in other oncology meetings around the world, these results are quite spectacular. However, for the surgeon, this really deserves a bit more attention because as we come into this multimodality era when we're going to be combining these pharma pharmacological advances with lung cancer surgery, surgery does not stand still. If we're still doing the same old surgery, when we uh, partner with these new, new adjuvant and adjuvant therapies, it's not going to work perfectly. We need to think carefully about how surgery um, can interact better. For example, by delivering surgery with different uh, minimally invasive approaches or with um, uh, different extensive resections, it's actually possible for surgeons to further modify or even improve outcomes of the combined treatment with those pharma pharmacological agents. Furthermore, by adapting our surgery, we can potentially influence which patients can receive multimodality treatment. And I'm not just talking about elderly patients or frail patients who now benefit from minimally invasive surgery, but I'm also thinking about the mindset where a lot of patients traditionally, we might not even think of as potential candidates for curative uh, 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 therapy. For example, a lot of patients with very small screening detected lesions, the traditional paradigm was to treat these patients quite conservatively. But in this day and age, if we can offer surgery that is quite advanced and you compare that with some of these multimodality approaches, maybe we should be lowering thresholds for certain patients. And certainly at the other end of the spectrum, when we have such good combined modality treatments, what about patients with traditionally more advanced disease? Patients that you might, have th might be thinking, oh, they're borderline for surgery or even outright unresectable. But if we can lower the cost, I mean the physical and human cost of uh, surgery, and you can combine that with 
advanced pharmacological therapy, maybe we can open up a cure for a whole new category of patients that hitherto we weren't able to reach. And we're thinking here, for example, about patients of oligometastatic disease, or maybe patients who might be eligible for what we now call salvage surgery. There are really many different avenues to explore here, which are really exciting and where we can be reaching a lot of patients that we previously couldn't. And going back to the title of this talk, what surgeons need to bring to this conversation, since the potential for multimodality collaboration is so great, surgeons need to bring to the MDT meeting their own um, uh, uh, perspectives on how the treatment can be combined effectively. They need to bring perspectives on which patients can receive such therapy, maybe uh, influence the eligibility criteria. And also, very importantly, surgeons need to point out some flaws in current uh, clinical trials, because a lot of the clinical trials on multimodality treatment often are done with relatively low surgical input. And sometimes a surgeon's perspective on the real world situation in surgery might actually cast a different light on the results or the findings or the interpretation of the findings of some of those uh, multimodality trials. And this is very important going forwards in translating some of these trials into more real world applicability. And I think surgeons have responsibility uh, to, to bring all this to the conversation. And last but not least, of course, surgeons need to bring some humility to these MDT meetings. Very often, if you go to a surgical conference and you see what surgeons talk about amongst themselves, well, we talk about how great our surgical technique is, how great our uh, technology is. However, when you bring it to a multimodality meeting, well, very often those advances tend to fall flat. And I think surgeons need to bring a new mindset in that if you're engaging in a multimodality conversation, really we should be speaking the same language as our oncology or uh, uh, physician partners and understand what their expectations of surgery is and what patients' expectation of surgery is, move away from the pure surgical mindset and really properly engage as part of the MDT. So I think in the very short uh, time I have for the uh, Naruki uh, lectureship, uh, I hope to bring some of these message, messages through, and hopefully uh, we can bring different specialties uh, closer together in lung cancer treatment.